Let's turn our Bibles to book of Luke chapter 16, verse 10. One verse. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Luke 16, verse 10. The title of the message is, Are You Faithful? Are You Faithful? Are You Faithful? Luke 16, verse 10. The Bible says, Luke 16, verse 10, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Brother Jay, can you pray for the message? Father, thank you once again for being so good to us, for saving us from hell, for giving us life in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We ask you, Lord, that you will watch this place with your precious blood. We Amen. ask that no sin will hinder the preaching of your word to drive the points into our hearts, Lord. We ask you that you will convict us, change yes. us. Lord God, you don't need us, but we need you every single moment. Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you that you will speak to Pastor Jay, Amen. fill him with your Holy Spirit. Lord, allow him to speak with all power and authority. Lord God, and the liberty so that your word can be delivered and that great effects can happen. Yes. Lord God, help each and every one of us not to think of the things that are happening in the world. Amen. Yes, Lord. Lord God, help us, help us to put those things aside, whether good or bad, but help us to wholly give ourselves to your word. Yes. For those who are not saved, pray that you will save them, Lord. And for those of us who are saved, Help us to increase our faith in you, Lord. Amen. Help us be better Christians. Yes. Protect us from devil's attacks. You just have to pray. Amen. 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 It is a very common question that we all should be asking each other on a daily basis. Even right now, you know, are you faithful? Are you faithful? When we see our verse today, he that is faithful in that which is least, is faithful also in much. You know, when Lord determines the success of a Christian, he judges our faithfulness. He doesn't see, you know, how successful we were as a Christian. That's where many of the Christians fall into a lot of sins and needless waste of time. You tend to judge and you tend to measure your success as a Christian Sometimes, you know, how many souls you led to the Lord. I mean, it's important, but that shouldn't be the measurement of your, you know, success. You shouldn't be like, I want to give most money to the church. It's good, but if you're doing it to show off to other people, that's a very bad motive. If your motivation is to come every Sunday and just mingle with people so that you could, you know, find a mate, now, certain people do that, too. Now, that's not being a successful Christian. Successful Christian, you know, is someone who knows the will of God and do it. That's literally what it is. But God will not measure you about how successful you are in your life, but he will measure you by how faithful you are. Amen. Think about it. You could be the poorest person in the whole world, but God has provided all your need. But you've been faithful in the sight of God. You are going to be rewarded. But if you have all the things in the world, but you're not faithful, then you're going to be looked as a failure. So when the Lord judges, when the Lord determines how good of a Christian you were, especially at the judgment seat of Christ, he'll determine by how faithful you've been. Many people don't like to be faithful in little things. That's why the Bible says it. I mean, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful. That means that there are many people who's not faithful in little things. Right away, you know, the little things that will help you on a daily basis. Without saying, I mean, you got to pray, you know, if you want to be faithful. You have to pray on a daily basis. And you have to pray first thing in the morning. You know, there's no such thing as, you know, I want to see how the day you know, plays out, and I'm going to pray. I mean, no, it doesn't work like that. 
It's almost like, you know, I'm not going to drink water until I really get thirsty, like at the noon. You know, can you imagine? If you don't drink for even a little bit, you know, you get really thirsty. So you have to start the day with prayer. You have to start the day with the Word of God. I mean, that's, that's just the basic things. But many Christians don't do it. Again, one thing that, you know, I don't think you and I should ever do is trying to lump things up. We're not a lump sum Christians, you know. We're like those annuity, you know, each day, you know, is consistent. Because, like I said, you know, if you've been faithful reading your Bible on a daily basis, you should be somewhere in Numbers, about Numbers 10, chapter 10-ish. And, you know, it depends people who started, you know. But if you started from Genesis 1-1, beginning of the year, you should be around, you know, Numbers chapter 10. And if you got to Numbers chapter 10 on January 1st, and then you haven't done anything, you know, you're not that faithful, right? You were just faithful that one day. But that's why God wants consistency. Yes. yes, I mean, you could still read a lot more Bible. Don't think that, you know, I'm letting you to, um, or I'm just, you know, restricting you to read Bible only like a few chapters a day. No, you have to do it every single day. I mean, being faithful is something that you do on a daily basis. Yes. That's why I love the, I mean, I can't say it enough. When someone asked Martin Luther, you know, what would you be doing, you know, if you knew that the Lord was appearing tomorrow? He said, I'm still going to do the same thing I do every day. If I'm, you know, working out in the garden, I'm going to be working out in the garden. If I'm in my library, I'm going to be in my library. If I'm out there doing something, why should I change my way yes. if the Lord comes back tomorrow, if I haven't been, if I've been living for him anyways? Yeah. But the thing is, many people, many Christians, when it comes to faithfulness, it's like it has to be that exciting thing. It's like you got to be that martyr, you know. You're like, I'm going to be, I'm going to die at the stake, right? And I'm going to be beat up out in the open. You know, you could, you know, just go to West Hollywood, you know, preach against all those, you know, homosexuals out there, you know, without any regard, right? Yeah. You know, go to San Francisco, right? You know, you get beat up, yeah. right? But are you doing it for the glory of God or are you doing it to show off yourself? Right. There are many people out there in social media where they want to make a name for themselves as a so-called Christian. Christian life isn't that exciting compared to what other people see, right? I mean, we do go out there on a weekly basis and do, you know, street ministry. But that's not the most important thing. Most important thing is your daily walk with God. Amen. And if you don't have a right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, you can't be faithful. So are you really faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ? That should always be number one question. Am I, am I faithful to my Lord and Savior who gave his life up for me, shedding his precious blood, who lives inside of me, right? Are you faithful to him on a daily basis? I mean, are you faithful to him right now, right? You could really be unfaithful to the Lord very easily. Yes. I mean, you don't do as what the Bible says. You're being unfaithful. Simple Amen. as that. I mean, if you don't know the Word of God, you'll always be unfaithful. <laughs> it's almost like, oh, well, how do I become faithful, right? Read the Word of God, because the Bible says faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. In order to be faithful, you have to grow. You have to grow as a Christian, yes. right? You can't stay as a baby forever. No. Majority of the Christians in America are all, I mean, they're going to end up as a baby spiritually. Yes. I mean, they've done nothing for the Lord. All they did was cry, murmur, and just ask for things. Didn't lead a soul to the Lord, been a bad testimony. Many of the folks, because of their life and testimony, rejected Christ. I mean, their blood would be required of them. So, when you look at yourself, if I want to be faithful, man, I have to grow. I have to grow spiritually. Right? Amen. Can you imagine... You know, like a little kid comes up to somebody, I am faithful and I am good enough because I know how to do multiplication table. Oh, son, you're in college. This is a calculus class. 
I mean, <laughs> that's not going to work here. <laughs> I mean, you you got to grow. You got to do something. You got to go through the steps. That's why we pray that we be filled with the Holy Ghost Amen. each day. That's why you pray in the morning, be filled with the Holy Ghost. You let the Holy Spirit control you. You let the Holy Spirit be the decision maker each day. You need time. Unlike a physical growth, though, spiritual growth depends all on you. It's just on you. The more you spend time with the Lord, the more you grow in the Word of God, the more you participate and pray from your heart in the ministry, you're going to grow faster, right? Just because, you know, you got saved at, you know, adult doesn't mean that you're going to be, you know, child all your life. No. Some Christians who's been coming to our church for only a couple of years, they've grown a lot more than someone who's been here 15, 20 years. Well, why is that? Because few have been faithful and others have been unfaithful. How can a relationship grow if one person or one party is always being unfaithful to the other party? Can you imagine, you know, married people? Like you always have to question where your husband is. You always have to question where your wife is, right? Yeah. You always have to check their social media account. You always have to see who they're talking to. I mean, it's, it's really bad because of the advancement of, you know, technology where faithfulness amongst, you know, married Christians is non-existent in many places. Right. When people say, right, you know, divorce rate is over like 50%, yes. I mean, it's, it's nothing. Probably it's gone up a lot. Yeah. yeah, maybe 60, 70. Why? Why does that happen? Because... One party is not being faithful. Amen. Usually it's always like that. And if you're not faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ, what's going to happen? Right? You know what that is called? You're adulterer. You're spiritual adulterer. You're spiritual whoremonger. Yes. Just like you know how Israelites, when they left God and started worshiping heathen gods? Yes. You know, they were spiritual adulterers and whoremongers. And their end was not good. They had to pay for it as a nation. But as spiritually speaking, if you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have to understand, each time I commit sin, each time I go against the Word of God, I'm committing adultery against Lord Jesus Christ. How many times have you committed adultery recently? Right? You become so, how should I say, Pharisee-like. Outside, you're fine, right? You know, you don't steal, you, know, you don't kill anybody, you don't rob and stuff. But inside your heart is full of snakes and devil, right? Yes. You have, you're full of envy, jealousy, hate, anger, dirty thoughts. Everything is inside of you. Right. Don't think that it's okay if your actions doesn't show it. Because eventually what's inside of you will show up. It just is a matter of time. I mean, how much have you guarded your heart? Only way you could do that is by allowing Holy Spirit to be the ruler. I mean, you got to have Holy Spirit feel life. That's why people sometimes think that, okay, this growth is so, how should I say, boring. It's unexciting. Like each day I wake up, read the Bible, I pray, and I do it over at nighttime. And, you know, I don't see thunder coming down. <laughs> and I don't feel anything, right? Oh, man, so what is this, right? But that's how you grow. You know, you got to be faithful in little things. You got to yes. do it each day, each day. Think about it. Why do you think this charismatic movement took over? Because people are looking for that excitement. You go to tent meetings, you know, some quack, some false <laughs> preacher grabs someone's head and just, <laughs> it's assault to me. 
he grabbed, grabbed the head and then threw that person on the ground. Yeah. And suddenly they stand up, I'm healed. You know, everybody's clapping wow. and running, going around. Yeah. And a lot of times it's, you know, already enacting, right? Yeah. They already planned that out, right? That's why it's funny if you see some clips, you know, if they line up like 10 people and then this quack goes and they hits them on the head as hard as possible. You, this is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You're going to be healed. You know, hey, we're going to kick the devil out of you. Suddenly, one, two, three, they look very painful. They fall down not because of filling with the Holy Ghost, because they're hurt. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine if someone smacks on your head as hard as they can? You're going to fall down, yeah. right? So one, two, three, four, and it comes to the sixth person. As the hand's coming down, he just falls. <laughs> you know, he's like, you know what? I'm not going to get hit, you know? I mean, they, they, they didn't pay me too much, you know? Smart. Yeah. And people with that, suddenly, devil's using it. Yeah. And so devil's like, oh, yeah, you got to be speaking in tongues, right? You got to have this Holy Spirit experience. So some Christians, they might be saved since they think that their Christian life is too boring just praying and reading the Bible and witnessing. They seek out something other. You can't do that. I mean, you, have, you and I have everything that we need, which is the Word of God. Yes. Why do you need to go outside of it? Right? As we were studying Balaam and on Wednesdays, you know, God told him, don't go. God told him, you know, bless Israel, right? And do not curse them. And he asked again when he already knew the answer. All the answers are here. You don't need to seek out of the word of God to find more about God, right? right? Everything's here. That's why you have to understand that, hey, if I've been lazy, lackadaisical, unfaithful to the Lord on little things, like just waking up early and just reading the Bible and praying, yes. you have to get right with the Lord. Amen. I tell you this, though. It's not going to happen overnight because you've been a backslidden Christian for so long. Yes. You can't just become suddenly, you know, George Mueller. No. Don't have that expectation. Some Christians, they have such a high regard for themselves that, you know what, I could just do this. You know, I've been a bad Christian, backslidden, starting next week, starting today, I'm going to be the best Christian possible. World, you watch. You know, and sometimes you tell that to your spouses, right? Because you've been such a bad Christian, backslidden role model, backslidden husband and wife, because you're angry, because you've been such a fool, you're like, I'm going to show you wife, I'm going to show you husband, how faithful I could be. You say I've been unfaithful, I'm going to prove you wrong. Man, what a bad attitude. Yeah. That's why you fail. That's why you never last long with that kind of attitude and that kind of heart. You're not there to please God. No. You're not there to appreciate what the Lord has done for you. All you want to do is prove some people wrong. We, we can't think like the world. World, their motivation a lot of times is because to prove people wrong. You know, like... You did wrong to me. I'm going to prove you wrong. I mean, that's a great source of motivation to worldly people. But you can't use that as your motivation as a Christian. You do anything, all things, for the Lord Jesus Christ and his glory only. That's it. You don't do it for anything else. Once you let that emotion get in the way, you can't be faithful. You're going to be unfaithful to the Lord because of your own desires. That's why if your spouse, your family, your children, your parents, your grandma, grandpa, your aunt, your cousin, or your coworker, if somebody points out sin in your life that you need to get right with because you've been unfaithful, be thankful to God. Amen. God, thank you that you use my wife, my husband, my children, somebody to point that out to me. Yes. Because I've been unfaithful. I have to get right with you. Yes. Because I want to give glory to you. And at the end of the day, if you're so proud, I mean, you don't have to say thank you for pointing that out to me, right? But at least you could change. Amen. Right? Yes. I mean, if a real man, real woman, 
Real person will appreciate it when God uses someone to point your sins out. Yes. That's why there's preaching. That's why there's Word of God Bible study. And that's why there's a common conversations amongst people. Then you have to accept it. And you have to understand that, you know what? I am nothing. I can't do anything on my own. The whole theme is that you and I are less than nothing. You and I are just sinners saved by grace. So without strength of the Lord, without strength of God, without the word of God, we can't accomplish anything. That's why you have to go to the source. That's why you have to go to the word of God each day, every day, early in the morning. You have to spend more and more and more. That's why if you are not where you should be with, when it comes to reading the word of God, I mean, each person has a different goal. It shouldn't be reading one word per day, though, right? It shouldn't be like, oh, yeah, you know. Lord, I'm just going to randomly open the Bible, and that's the place you want me to look at, right? Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, number seven. Oh, it's too long. And 80-some verses. No, 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 no. Lord, just show me somewhere from the Psalms, right? <laughs> And then you go to the Psalms and like, Lord, you know, maybe Psalms somewhere like where there's like two verses, you know. I mean, your desire is to spend as little of time as possible with God. Sure. As little of time as reading the Word of God. If you ever want to grow, you got to put your time. Yeah. How do children grow? By eating right, you know. And time passes by and they grow, right? And they exercise, they grow healthier. As Christians, if you don't eat the Word of God on a regular basis, and if you don't get right nutrition from the Lord with the right fellowship, your growth will always be stalled. The funny thing about thing is that, you know, even human beings, after they grow up to be an adult, but they stop taking right nutrition, they lose weight, they become weak, and ultimately they die of hunger, right? I mean, how, what's the mat, I mean, normal time if you don't eat, right? I mean, what, like three, four weeks, a few months, and you die, right? Four weeks. Water, like a week at most, and you die. If that happens to your physical body, what do you think is happening to your spiritual self, right? Your spiritual body. It's lacking water. It's lacking nutrients. It's lacking everything. It's almost like it's hard for you to stand up. That's why when you listen to the Word of God, when you study the Word of God, you know, people, these crooks out there, they do 40-day, 40-night prayer just like Jesus did. That's how Moses was, and they try to show that I'm so holy, right? And we have cases where they finish it. These are false preachers. They eat it and they die because they eat like too much all at once. You've been such a backsliding Christian, it's going to take time. Yes. Little by little, little by little. But you have to do it. You've got to build yourself up to be faithful. So don't expect suddenly God to tell you to be a preacher somewhere, start a church somewhere, if you haven't been faithful. Yeah. Right? That's where all these false doctrines and stuff happens. They show up just for a little bit and then suddenly disappears. That's how you got to be faithful where you are, where you're sitting. That's how you grow. Amen. Right? You listen, you be faithful, and you just rely on the Lord to give you strength to grow as a Christian. That's why many people don't have a spiritual discernment. Right? When it comes to spiritual things, since you've been unfaithful, it's hard for you to discern what's right or wrong. Yes. Right? You shouldn't be... For example, if you're not great, grounded in the right doctrine, don't go anywhere. Just be grounded in the right doctrine, right? You know, I mean, we teach, right, like those doctrines, you know, theological seminar of the air. Just be grounded in those first and then grow in the Word of God instead of going outside of it and say, you know, what's out in the space, you know? Always asking like those, you know, conspiracy stuff. That's not, uh, that's not going to help you. No. I mean, I, like I always say, T-I-O-N shuns, right? 
all those, you know, salvation stuff, if you don't even know, don't go any far. Learn those things first, like justification, adoption, you know, sanctification. Like, learn those first. I mean, learn basic doctrines first. Yes. And let the Lord give you wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Amen. It's not you and me, right? So if you want to grow and if you want to become more faithful, you need to build your knowledge, your wisdom, and also understanding. So how do you build knowledge? Through the Word of God. Yeah. I mean, so you can't really please God. You can't really be faithful without those three, right? Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You need all those. Some people always just seek wisdom. You know, God, give me wisdom. God, give me wisdom. Lord's like, it's already in the Word of God. The answer is there. You know? Like some verses that, you know, wicked devil's translations changes to, right? You know, like, you know, abstain from all appearance of evil, study to show that self approval unto God, you know, he was, God was manifest in the flesh. Like, all those verses are there. Yeah, but you're like praying to God, give me wisdom how to, st- I mean, give me wisdom to study the word of God, right? Where is it? You know? If you have the wrong version, right? <laughs> I go, oh, where is, like, you know, God was manifest in the flesh? You have the wrong thing, right? So, for Christians who's using the wrong Bible, you can't really get the right knowledge. Right. But thank God, you know, I'm, I know that people here and majority of the people listening, you know, you believe that King James Bible is the perfect word of God. Yes, sir. Not the original manuscript that nobody yeah. has seen nowadays, <laughs> right? You know, that's a foolish thinking. Yes. Yeah. Your God, I don't believe in your God if your God cannot preserve his perfect that's word. Right. right? So you have it. So study so that your knowledge will grow. And you will have more wisdom with more fellowship with the Lord. Amen. So now you have the knowledge. Now you want more wisdom. You got to have fellowship with the Lord continuously. That's why you have to pray. You have to spend as much time as the Lord with the Lord when you have free time. Yes. You have to pray. I mean, the more you spend time with the Lord, the more wisdom the Lord will give to you. Right? It's, it's, a, it's very, how should I say, normal thing, right? If I want to know more about you, the way you think, the right way you want me to do, I'm going to pick your brain. That's what people say, right? Hey, let me pick your brain so that I can learn more about how you think, how you would, you know, do certain things in certain situations, right? Because some things in the Bible are gray areas, right? You know, it's, 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 it's like you have to make decision. You know, there aren't clear-cut verses, right? Like, for example, right, you know, the you know, Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, right? So you know for sure that you're not supposed to marry an unbeliever. But you have, like, a couple of people that, you know, you're praying for. They're both, say, Bible-believing Christians, right? You know, I mean, Bible doesn't clearly answer you, oh, choose someone who's taller, choose someone who's shorter, right? Right? So now you just pray to God, and then God will give you wisdom, Right? It's just like that, or even like the jobs, right? You know, it's not going to stop you from doing the ministry, you know, pays about the same and everything, and, you know, you just pray to God. Like those, like a certain stuff like that. Don't do it on your own, though. That's when you make mistake. When you don't go to the Lord, and you're like, okay, I think I know what I'm doing, and then, you know, your marriage breaks apart, don't blame God for it, yeah. right? Just think about the time when you were praying about your mate and what did you do? Do you remember a time you were praying to the Lord? Did your knowledge grow? Did you ask for wisdom? And third thing that people don't really understand is the understanding. What does understanding mean? You go about beyond you know, wisdom and knowledge and now you understand God's will in your life. You understand God's will and you follow. Satan had all the knowledge, but he didn't have understanding. Why? He didn't want to do God's will. Right? A lot of Christians never grow and a lot of Christians become unfaithful because they know knowledge because knowledge puffs up. 
they think that they're spending a lot of time with the Lord, so they think they have this false sense of wisdom. But when it comes to understanding, no, 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 Lord, no, I can't. No. I mean, they know. The funny thing is they know it's the will of God, but they refuse to do it. Right? All right. All right. They always give an excuse because now they know the word of God too much for their own good. Like, oh, you know, what about her? What about him? You know? And it totally takes things out of context. You know, no more dispensation, you know, no more rightly divine the word of God. You know, Lord, you know, I have to do this. You know, look at that verse. You're trying to reason with the Lord who wrote the Bible, saying, oh, you know, I'm right, you know, but you're not. That's why I emphasize again, even if you don't get anything, if you really want to be faithful to the Lord, first thing you do in the morning when you wake up, you read the word of God and you pray. That's what you got to do. Because for some, it's such a foreign idea. And don't give me excuse that I work all night. Everybody has excuse. Yeah. People who raise children, they're the 24-hour workers, right? Moms and dad. Don't say that I work graveyard shift. They work graveyard shift like until they're, you know, ready. So you and I could give all the excuses in the world. But you and I have to... Do this right after you wake up. You got to spend time with the Lord. You got to do a couple things. You pray, you read, you read, pray, do something. You have to talk to the Lord. You got to let him talk to you. Yes. These timing, all these things that you invest, all these things that you do will help you grow. You know, it's a mundane thing, right? Especially if you're in a military, you always have to wake up at 5.30 or 5. You're like, oh, I hate this, you know? Especially people who have a lot of sleep in their life. You know, certain people don't need a lot of sleep. They maybe need, they maybe need like three or four hours. But certain people need like 12 hours of sleep each day. Ten hours, right? Yes. Eight hours, you know? But, you know, God will always provide your need. You think God will take away your strength when, he's trying, when you're trying to spend more time with him? And suddenly you're like, you're going to tell God, God, you know, I have more headache. I have more tiredness. I feel more weak, you know, when I'm trying to spend time with you or when I'm actually spending time with you. I mean, devil might attack you up to that point. But once you start spending time with the Lord, spiritually, you're going to be blessed. You're going to have more strength. That's why I wonder if we, if we have like a, some kind of spiritual x-ray, right? How old we are, right? Spiritually speaking, right? You know, are you are you just a little baby still? You've been saved for 20, 30 years, and you're still a little child, you know? Or have you grown, right? I mean, you've been saved only five years, but you're like already a soldier, right? Adult, because you know your heart is just out there to serve the Lord with the right knowledge, right wisdom, and right understanding. You gotta try to grow. You have to grow. Yes. So if you don't grow, it's going to stall, and you're going to go down. Then what does that mean? You're going to be unfaithful more and more and more. Good. The closer you are, more faithful you'll be to the Lord. Farther away you are, you're going to be very, very unfaithful. Yes. You know, I think one of the worst things that a human being could hear from anybody is that you're an unfaithful person. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's one thing I would never want to hear, right? Whether it's at work, whether it's at home, whether it's at church, whether it's just some random person coming up to you and say, hey, you're unfaithful, <laughs> you know? Well, it kind of, you know, rubs you the wrong way, right? Yes. Because it kind of hits you in the heart at home, right? Because you and I are unfaithful to the Lord on a daily basis. It's just that the level of it is different amongst each Christian. Yes. Yeah, for example, since you're already so backslidden, you don't even care about certain things, right? You know, when you're watching worldly stuff, it, like, it doesn't even bother you anymore, right? Yeah. When you're listening to worldly music, it doesn't even bother you anymore, right? Mm -hmm. But for certain people, Christians, who's really close to the Lord, they, they drive by a you know, gas station, they listen to some worldly music playing, and then they give their attention for even one second, two seconds. They're like, oh, man, Lord, I'm so sorry. They get on their knees and they just get right with the Lord, literally. You know, that's how spiritually close they are to the Lord. They want to be holy, right? Amen. They want to be faithful in every little thing. Yes. Right? 
I mean, even billboards, right, when you're driving out on the road, on freeway, and they have some wicked pictures out there sometimes, yeah. right? You know, advertising some wicked stuff that goes on. And, you know, you're driving, it's right in your view, right? If you don't look at that way, you kind of get into accident, right? Because after, 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 and then you turn around, and then you're like, oh, and then because you fall into it, that, you know, stare for a little bit, and then that image gets into your brain. Yes. Because something about those images, it sticks to you. Yeah. But if you're close to the Lord, I guarantee you, if you're faithful to the Lord, then you're going to go to the Lord right away and confess that sin. Amen. Right? Because you feel like, man, I know I haven't been faithful to the Lord. But for certain people who doesn't care about anything, they don't care, right? They just look at it all day, every day, you know, when they're driving, right? And on the phone, like some wicked stuff always pops up. First of all, you shouldn't be at a site. That's why it's popping up. If you are at a wrong site, that's why they cater to people who goes to that site. Don't be like, oh, you know, I was trying to research stuff, but all this wicked stuff just came in. Okay, if you're at a little baby bookstore, those things aren't going to come up. But you're somewhere you shouldn't be. Yeah. Or it could be borderline, right? You know, when it's borderline, don't get close to it. Amen. That's the Bible says, abstain from all appearance of evil. Yes. Right? <laughs> Imagine if this is like a bar and it's about to burn down, right? <laughs> and then you should be far away from it. Yeah. Don't be like, oh, I want to see how it is. I want to see how it is. And then, you know, as it burns down, you know, something pops up and then scratches you, hurts you, and cuts you. Yeah. you know, don't be blaming somebody or anybody. Just blame yourself. Right. You were too close to it, right? That's why you have to understand, am I really close to the Lord right now? Those, those little things bother me. I mean, just little things. I mean, little sins. If little sins don't bother you, big sins won't even bother you either. Yeah, that's true. If little sins bother you, Huge sins will like almost give you a heart attack, right? Oh man, Lord, 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 I don't know. But you don't even get that far. Just thinking about it gives you like the fear of the Lord on you, like real bad. Amen. Like terror of the Lord is inside of you. Yeah. So many people who's unfaithful, they don't have fear of God. Yeah. Literally, you don't fear God. You just don't know when God's going to strike you. Man, that's a scary thing. You know, you know what's the most exciting thing about being a Christian to me? Even though people think it's a boring life, Lord resolves things, strikes things in a second's notice. Yes. My Lord goes, okay, it's time. And then everything's resolved. Lord says, it's time. Everything's blown up. Lord says, it's time. Okay, it's finished. Just like that. That's the most exciting thing. That's why you're being faithful because Lord's going to resolve it at any moment, Amen. during his time. Yes. That's why you're faithful to the Lord. That's why we pray for Lord's coming, yes. because it's going to happen in a twinkling of an eye. Amen. Lord solves things in your life when you're faithful, in a twinkling of an eye. You may be praying about a certain topic for two years, three years, 10 years, 15, 20 years, but Lord says when it's time, when it seems impossible to every single eyes, he goes, you know what, it's time. Resolve. And he gets all the glory. Amen. You know why he does that? So that he could get the glory. Praise so that he wants to point out to you that you can't do anything without me. Amen. You oh, you should understand. But it's a loving relationship. Yes. Lord wants to do it for you if you rely on him. I mean, why would Apostle Paul write, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me? Opposite, I can't do anything to, without Christ Amen. because there's no strength in me. Yes. So you got to find strength in the Lord. And quickly, I'm going to go over a few things, you know. These are the times when you have to be faithful. Like first one, times of trials. Times of trials, you have to be faithful because the devil's going to always attack you. You know, the devil's going to attack you even right now. He hates you listening to Bible-believing preaching, being in a Bible-believing local church, you know, being in a Bible-believing fellowship. He hates it. So you have to understand that Satan is constantly attacking you. Yes. But the greatest thing is that he can't do anything more than God allows him to do it. So that's why you just continue, continue. When things are 
going not the way you expect it, you should be more faithful to the Lord. What do you mean? Cling on to Him more. Amen. Pray to Him more. Yes. Read the Word of God more, right? Yes. Do more things that will make you get closer to the Lord. That's why through trials and tribulation, you got to continue to keep going. You know, what nations win wars, right? Everybody's hurt. Both nations are hurt. But the nation that's hurt, that's continuously moving forward, they win. You are going to be hurt. You might never get fully healed until when you go to heaven. But you have to keep on going, yes. right? As long as you can move with your scars on your body, you know, even aches here and there, you just got to continue to move. Because the Lord wants to see a faithful person. He doesn't, he's not looking for someone who could kill 1,000, 2,000 enemies. He's looking for someone who's faithful, continue to go on. And secondly, I, mean, I mentioned that again, you have to be faithful when it comes to your prayer life. You have to be faithful. It's like your lifeline, you know. It's like all the food that you could get. You know, it's like your water. Just think about it, right? You know, I'm thirsty. I have to drink water. Spiritually speaking, you should be thirsty all the time. You should, you should go to the Lord. Right? You should be praying all the time. That's why when you're a man of prayer, think about it. George Mueller was praying for his, you know, orphans. And he's praying. And then suddenly there's milk and food just like that. Lord said, you know what? It's time. Right? And, and he prayed, what? Like four or five hours every day on his knees. So I think he had, I don't even, I forgot what it, the term called. It's like uh, if you pray so much on your knees, it turns into something. It forms to something. He had that because he prayed hours and hours each day. And he was running the large orphanage. Yes. So don't say that all he did was pray. He did everything he had to do to do his best, and also pray to the Lord. Probably he slept less, right? Yeah. Probably he didn't sleep like 10 hours a day, I'll no. tell you that. You know, probably he slept like a few hours. The rest of the time, he just spent it with the Lord. That's what you got to do. You know, you have to pray and pray. This day and age, nobody wants to wait on the Lord. That's the problem. Yes. That's for Christians. That's Everybody true. wants like a quick answer, yeah. right? right now. Lord, you know, I need this. I needed this yesterday. Yeah week ago. Lord, where is it? Instead of waiting on the Lord, trusting in Him, trusting that His time is the best time. Amen. You, gotta, you gotta be consistent. You have to be faithful that Lord will do only the best thing for you. Why would you even question to God Almighty, who saved you from hell, that, oh, you know, He's looking out the worst for me. Why? And He's looking out best for you. I mean, Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are according to purpose. Whether it's good or bad, that's happening in your life. It's for your own good. Yes. So don't neglect the time of prayer. And if you've been doing it, just know that you've been unfaithful. Yes. You know? And we can't see it. For spiritually, you have that big U on your forehead. And you have to be, another one, you have to be faithful in witnessing. You have to. Like, whenever you get opportunity, you just have to witness. Be faithful about it, right? Being faithful when it comes to witnessing for the Lord means make sure that whoever you meet, talk to, hear about the Lord, whether it's through your conversation, whether it's through chick tracks, you got to do it. Yes. Well, how else are you going to do it, right? I mean, how else without giving him a track or without talking to him? Or you, do you have like a telepathy or something? Like you could talk to them, you know, through your brain, you know, wavelength. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. No, you're a fool. You know, those evil spirits are going to stop it from happening. So yeah. you have to do it. You know, yeah, whatever, whenever you have opportunity, you got to be faithful unto the Lord when it comes to preaching the gospel. Yes. In season, out of season, whether you're sick, whether you're not sick, whether you are, you know, in the best mood or the worst mood, you just got to do it, Right? You could have fought with your spouse, you know, one minute ago, but if someone walking by, you know, you need to give it to them, give it to them. Amen. Man, your personal ordeal should not stop you from witnessing to somebody. Right. right? That's something that you and I have no excuse, right? Are you ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Or are you not? It's a yes or no question. So in conclusion, you know, think about it. You know, Lord measures you 
as how faithful you are. And if you want to be faithful, you got to be faithful in little things. And it grows. Don't ever forget that you can always ungrow. <laughs> you could always go, I mean, slower and slower and go into more backslidden stage. But also remember that it's up to you relying on the Lord to grow as fast as you can, as close to the Lord. I want to be, you know, I'll fin let's go to this verse and finish. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25. This is what I want to hear. This is what I want all of our congregation to hear. Matthew 25, verse 21. Matthew 25, verse 21. I mean, the whole point about us living here on earth is what? I know, bring glory to him. Because he saved us from hell, right? Yes. Matthew 25, 21. The Bible says, his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Few things, little things. When you are faithful, you will hear from the Lord. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Let's pray. Dear Father, sometimes we get into this wrong trend in sin where we only look at big things when it comes to being faithful. We have to be faithful in little things, Lord God. If we want to grow spiritually, continuously grow, we need to be faithful in little things. Help us not to neglect prayer, spending time with you, first thing in the morning, on a daily basis. Because the world is so wicked, devil's attacks are too strong, and our flesh is too strong. Help us realize that in order for us to be faithful, we can't do anything on our own. We have to trust in you. Help us rely on you. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. Help us to be filled with the Holy Ghost each day. Let our decisions not be made on our own, but be wholly based on you, Lord God. And help us to have that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to serve you more and more and better and better. And above all, even so come, Lord Jesus, and bless the rest of the services today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.